Welcome to the Holy Spirit's Curriculum of Joy podcast. My name is Wanaka Overhuber, and my guest today is Rachel Eaton. Hi. Hi, Wanaka. Yeah, this podcast is dedicated to Simon, who was on the podcast a while ago and was speaking about healing and the real world and many other topics. And it was really, really deep. Mm -hmm. And Rachel has been very close to him for many, many years. And we would like to go deeper into it because he has um, yeah, evolved in the meantime. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, well, if we let's let's get right to right to it. Um, so uh, Simon brought me the course a few uh, about fourteen years ago. He'd been studying it for about ten years prior. Picked it up, put it down, and had it with him at that point. Um, and I followed him into it, and we we studied the course intently on a daily basis for ten years. And then um, I chose to put the book down um, and move to not not forget the book. The book was always here, but to put it down, to stop reading it, to try and live it. And uh, Simon was a studier of the book. He preferred to just sink his mind into it. He understood it so deeply um sometimes would confuse it intellectually as i would use it practically and not study it maybe enough so together we were a really good balance between um guiding each other through our experiences you know like living in the home and doing chores and things like that so we grew together with that book and we 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 also talked a language that can and used to make me feel like if I spoke to others in that way that I looked odd but I've since learned how to communicate it authentically gracefully and still sound like me rather than a hierarchy of knowledge of knowing something more than maybe somebody else does yet what Simon and I taught each other that it was always an uncovering it's a course in undoing it's not a course in knowledge not in the knowledge that we have been taught to know what that is. So, yeah, so bringing that to his diagnosis. So um, in on Christmas Eve, he was diagnosed um, with bowel and liver cancer. And his reaction was calm and, and non-reactive. It wasn't someone that would respond in a reactive way. He would kind of you could almost see he was handing it over for someone something higher than him to give him his answers and again you know through his guidance i could do the same and we had difficult conversations he he did say why me after you know i've studied the course all this time they were they were the ego moments so he didn't have much more to bring up and he said it so lovingly and so gently he didn't even say in a in an attack, no, he wasn't like, why me in a, woe is me. It was just a question, literally just a question. And we didn't really have the answer to it, just that we realized it was one of the lessons that talks about um, death. And we spoke that word often. It wasn't a taboo word, you know, because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist to who we are and I don't suppose we really believe that whilst we're walking around in this body but to watch someone to go through the realization of the diagnosis and to get to a point of acceptance of his time here was over but his time was not over it was quite interesting to watch he knew m much deeper than I can ever experience at the moment because I'm not in his in that situation. But he he taught me. I trusted him so much. We had brought each other 
along this journey in by side by side guiding each other and holding that beautiful space for each other to grow um and i had no reason not to trust him in his deepest experiences and as his body withered away and became it, you know like you kind of reverse I, I, you, you, it's like being born again you you know you, you lose the ability to walk to talk you don't eat so much food it's liquid um you know all those things it's it's like a, the circle it really is but if we're just identified by our bodies and our illness and our wellness and our sickness yeah it's a really scary and anxious world to live in but to see that the beauty that arrives in someone's face when they are departing it's serenity it's perfect peace so that's without the body so that taught me well why would I wait when I've seen what happens at the end of a beautiful mind that gave so much pure love to everyone he met there were no special people in Simon's life he loved right. everybody and that's what made him so beautiful to be around and also made you see your own beauty and your own love and so the reflective bounce that I call it comes and so that taught me right so if that's what happens there what could I learn to use now <clears throat> and it's knowing that love is not something love is it just mm -hmm. is and we put too much narrated stories to what that is rather than be love so loving yourself in a way where you don't need the body and so that meditative state yeah, it's I a got beautiful to know thing. Simon in the midst of this. You know, he, we got to know each other when he had already been diagnosed. I didn't mm. know it at the beginning. No. Yeah. So he, he wouldn't put that first. Yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't, wouldn't want. He certainly would not want to be identified by any concept, let alone a physical disease yeah he he knew he wasn't even simon he knew that simon was a an, a communication a, an ease of communication you know he knows who was talking to him it was it, but he wasn't simon or rizzo or paul or his face he never even kept to one name <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, he he kind of he just didn't want to he wanted to be seen more like a brother be my brother or you're my brother and that may, meant that we were all the same there was no separation opportunities and labels often do that you know I'm married I'm single I'm poor I'm rich I mean the list just goes on and on and on I'm happy I'm sad I'm and love doesn't need any more explanation. We all know exactly what that is. Yeah, and he, he wanted um, me to speak openly once I even knew. He didn't want mm. me to treat him in any special way because no. he was going through this physical experience. Mm. He, 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 would, he would say that it was his physical experience and, and he, it, he would he doesn't he wouldn't want me to maybe think of every film you've watched with the, the story of cancer in it or everyone that's passed through cancer or you know like he it, it just that just makes it so real and identify taking him away from where he was reaching and he he's he'd always known this but he'd never experienced it and he'd only experienced it through the diagnosis of of his this cancer in the body but realizing that when that arrived 
well, he was still here. He was still Simon. He was still whoever it was driving Simon, this body Simon. He wasn't this body. He, you know, like it really made it clear cut. And the and it's normally a razor blade. We kind of ride on that edge of that razor blade. Oh, I'm happy, but am I? And or I'm not. And but he was happy. He was very happy. He was, in, he was just buried into the teachings, and he loved the psychotherapy pamphlet. He he really promotes that as something that everyone should read. Yeah, and and I agree. Yeah, it was it was beautiful to be able to connect with him, and he 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 felt like he was continuing to be truly helpful no matter what was going on. Yeah, yeah. In his personal experience of the body. Oh, absolutely. He he wanted to keep guiding and teacher learning all the way through. He he didn't want to stop. And if you remember. Um, Because obviously we're all friends on Facebook as well. And there was a time there, it was was about two or three weeks before he passed, I think. And we, he we still had his voice, though it was very quiet, but, you know, I could still hear him. Uh, He, he hadn't said much that day and he called me in and I was sitting there and he said that he was really disappointed with himself of not being able to keep communicating with his community (laughs) like you know can barely speak hadn't eaten for 28 days and all he could think about was his loving relationships i thought that was just so oh yeah love in action that was very Um, remarkable yes yeah and so we came up with this idea um that we would, and I, I'll let you into a little secret here. With the 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 the, the Facebook um, post was um, written in a way that we said that Simon wanted to hear from everybody, and so I could read to him at night, and he could remember them again, you know, because he was he was fading into somewhere beautiful, um, which will come on to that a bit later but um yeah so we we did this post and we had an overwhelming response um which i couldn't read them all to him it we didn't have the time but it was just overwhelming and after a while what we got to learn was this was more his gift to everyone that loved him that would not have an opportunity to say goodbye yes. releasing them instantly yeah, he, from, he, also, from he also asked you to communicate with people on Messenger and mm. everything, right? For mm. Him, mm. If I remember correctly, and you That's would, right. and you'd share with him what people had been saying. That's it. That's it. That's what we did, and it was, it was such a. Uh, I think everyone that wrote on that board or sent a, a loving symbol of some description gained so much from the opportunity to be able to remember a beautiful loving person um and it was a reminder as well i mean a a majority of of the beautiful people that came forward were in lockdown and and you know in the height of all the covid fears and stuff um, and so I do think it was a reminder to to those people, you know, not to remember someone's dying or or any of those horror stories, but to remember love. And it doesn't ever leave us. It's what we, it can't. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And, and so his legacy. Simon was so important to him, right? Yeah. And um his last words to me so my question to him um it was about uh, 40 minutes before he passed um it was a beautiful um summer's evening and the doors were all open onto the garden and birds were singing and there was this really lovely buddhist music sort of playing in the background and i came in and i just held his hand and i said to him what am i supposed to do now 
and he just uh, he he actually raised his head, um, which he couldn't do, and he was very wide eyed, and uh, he held my hand and he said, "You just have to love yourself," and that was Beautiful. it. Yeah, that was it. That was the, his last words to me, and and he's and it's so that I just whenever I feel the wobble of having ego thoughts that lead me to dark thoughts or you know all of uh, emotion that's not aligned with love because i i think there's a fine line the razor blade because emotion is a great thing when aligned with love it's beautiful to cry and in love is oh it's wonderful um as long as you don't narrate stories of the physical eyes and the physical ears and make that true because his legacy is love and I won't allow myself to wander into magic thoughts yeah I can leave it at that yeah that's very beautiful and I remember how touched my grandma was when my grandpa in his last words said I love I still love you yeah yeah and and how meaningful that was to her. I think love is a word when used in moments is incredibly powerful. I think love used for gain or believing that love is something that you get from outside of yourself can be very painful because it's not consistent. Whereas the love that they're talking about, this love for yourself, um it's consistent when practiced properly you, it, 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 the only the only block to it is our is our thoughts based mm-hmm. on our emotions based on our beliefs based on our desire and i think it's important to go you know those circles to in the mind map to go real deep and and kind of know that it's an undoing, go back, don't go forward on this love being outside of ourselves. Um, That's where the problems arise, I think. I've had problems in my past, you know, with love and separation and what love is, and I haven't, I don't now, but I can definitely see how the madness creeps in. Um, And when you can see that and guide someone back to knowledge that they already have for themselves which is another thing that the course that i love it's not a case that we do not already know this um so it's not something you have to intellectually learn it's something you've got to be more willing to undo (laughs) that's easy Mm, yeah the memory of who we are Mm. and even if we don't know truly what that is we have an idea we have an idea and it's all that good stuff. It's the, I learned um, with my own personal experience with watching, you know, obviously I, I didn't, I, I, I don't agree in, in teaching that I walked this without tears or with beliefs in egoic thoughts of loss and separation. Of course, absolutely I did. But that's how I've grown deep have gone deeper that's how I'm undoing more is because of those experiences so I used to suffer quite heavily with um what they call anxiety and I always knew it was um and that was born from mainly the Christchurch earthquakes um this fight or flight situation that kept happening learnt behavior but with the course that's when I was quite heavily into the course <clears throat> with that guide I could guide myself uh, deeper away from this belief emotion and thought system <clears throat> and then I got to learn well when I'm really excited and happy I get this same feeling that I used to call anxiety But it was anxiety because of my narrated thoughts around those emotions based on my beliefs of my desire, etc. And so when I started changing my mind to more 
everything to do with the course and everything you know and, and the practical use of that which I got a lot of help from another book um this miracle is your moment which has a practical application uh, which really sat well with me that I was able to turn those anxieties the the the, the but the experience of anxiety and just hold it just for a bit longer than giving it an immediate reaction and response. Just to hold it just for a bit. It, what's this aligned with? What, well, obviously my mind was going cancer, death, chemo, uh, separation, you know, all these intense experiences. But by letting them up, and you know not just keep putting them down don't think about that because you can't do that either that the practice literally is the situation the realizing the mind map the mind watching using your tool bag i call it and walking it and then that's the practice it's like anything we practice we have to keep repeat 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 and that's the one thing i note in the course does it does continually just repeat repeat using lots of different examples so when you can apply it that way well the, your life's your example i mean it, you have it it's just there and then since this experience with simon and coming out the other side i have more experiences of the wonderment of life than I do for the adversities. You know, they're not really here anymore. And I'm, I, I kind of like, really? You know, have I, have I overcome the belief that I can be harmed in any way? Uh, uh, yeah, I have. I really have. So, when you release fear from death, I think that's the, the cage and the prison, and this death word, the physical form goes to back to wherever it came from, you know. It's a vehicle, it's a communication device. And what we should be communicating is love. And that's yeah. it, really. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so simple. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Yeah, Simon wanted to communicate love, even if it meant he wasn't using the words of A Course in Miracles. Yes. And I yeah. remember, like, he didn't want to impose A Course in Miracles on anyone. No. So, no. Yeah. No, we, 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 we looked at that. We had many conversations. I mean, like Simon and I um, hadn't had um, paid jobs for 14 years so we spent every day together and loved it yeah and we we were like complete soulmates and these teacher guides and uh, silent partners and oh it was just wonderful and um yeah he we talked about you know wouldn't it be great to have a group and a gathering and and all of this kind of stuff. And we realize you can't, you don't make that happen. It's brought, you follow, you follow these little things that come along. You can't just make these things happen. And obviously they weren't meant to happen. Um, so he's, he grew his group um, on over social media and it was very successful. You know, he had a lot of people come to him as I now do. Um, a lot of my day is spent talking to wonderful people all around the world um, who know me through Simon, um, through other situations, um, people I've just met. Um, it's quite amazing. So community comes in all sh shapes and sizes and in all different ways and not just that one avenue. And I think that's how I'm open to, to it all now even this interview right it's now it's very inspiring that you opened up to community right mm. Mm. it just kind of happens though don't you find i mean for you even like 
now and all these wonderful podcasts you're doing um, where we can share our experiences and our teaching and our learning. Um, you, you're doing the same thing and I suppose everyone else is too. That's the beauty of it. It's a sharing situation. It's not a hierarchy, patient, therapist, you know, therapist, patient. I know you don't. This is about sharing knowledge that we all know. Yes, indeed. Reminding each other that we all are already whole. Yes, that we're yeah. perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, that past is exactly that and the future is future past if you're your own thinking 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 um and the world of distraction it makes it a lot easier now to be distracted i had i had a situation where i found myself since simon um not physically here anymore that i found i was not only talking to um other community but um uh, distracted by the other parts of my square screen and I have to, it, it's that balance of being in nature and being present and silence and no distraction along with music I love music but I was tend I, what I was doing was just the telephone you know just being in my phone and oh, I felt crazy there for a while and since dropping it during the day you know like I have hours where I go on to the community and hours where I sit in silence and hours where I and I feel very grateful to be able you know that doesn't go unnoticed for me every day my grateful situation of being able and privileged to be able to do that um you know, and I'm open to that changing at any time, you know, I'm not fixed to anything. Um, but yeah, so Simon was very mindful of that too. And weirdly, near the end, he just didn't want the phone anymore. He wanted just himself. And he loved listening to the birds and just silence. It was lovely. He wasn't, he wasn't ever quiet, though, if you understand that. He was somewhere really beautiful. Yeah, mm. he was also speaking of how language is so healing. Speaking mm. communication. Mm. And that was one of the main points he would bring up about the psychotherapy pamphlet. Mm. The importance. Mm. I think um, we tend to talk about what. Um, happened in the perceptual world so you know the everything we're doing rather than what our minds are thinking um our depression you know like anxieties um everyone has pretty much i've met to date some kind of backstory that justifies how they feel now. Yeah, and that's that's the problem, right? Right. Because, because that backstory, mm. I remember someone saying the backstory, you only remember it in order to use it for teaching purposes. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's, that's so the way true. they saw it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would. It's the same as saying, um, "All my backstory is my future," because if my backstory is what I believe and I'm walking today, then it my backstory is going to be my future. Yeah. So the the explanation was that those feelings are not no longer there. The yes. stuck feelings and so on. Yeah. For this yeah. person who was saying it, right? Yes. And, yes. And this re- so the story yeah. is is still one can still remember the story, but for the purpose of of sharing yeah. the the journey, not for the purpose of getting stuck in the emotions, because that was no longer happening for them. There, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's that narrated story again. You know, like 
we can use our past memories to remember our joy and remember freer times. Um, I like to look at children uh, playing and how free and crazy arms and legs and the words that come out their mouths, you know, like they're not really thinking as such. They're sort of just getting it out. But there's not anyone really listening to guide that. So it's quite interesting. I, I kind of, um, the innocence, when does it leave? When did it leave us? You know, like in the patterns, there was a time where we felt so energized. We were never tired. We slept less, we ran more, we ate less, but we had so much energy. And then you get older and distractions and the backstory that we keep with us, all the good bits, the, the bits that can justify our depression. And we get tired and we think it's because we're working so hard that we're not getting enough sleep. But yet, we're not doing half as much exercise. We're not, you know, we're just, it, it's, it can't be right. It doesn't make logical sense. And so I looked at that, I was always tired and I was always tired because I was always thinking of all the different things, all the different responsibilities, all the people pleasing that I hadn't done, all the people pleasing that I had done, but no one had recognized. Sacrifice, always in sacrifice, always something's been taken from me. And then you learn with your tool bag. Um, no, our, 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 and our, our, it's not energy, that's not the word I want to use. Our awakeness comes from our love because we can be the most tired. We can even go back in time and use that history to know, well, do you not remember a time when you were really, really tired and you're definitely not going to do that thing that you're supposed to be doing later because you're so tired. But you go because you feel obliged to. You have so much fun and so much laughter that you've forgotten that you were tired. And it's because you're just in your joy. That's it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's this, of course, the miracles also shares about that, right? The how, mm. how tired one is of the mm. world that one has mm. made. <clears throat> We're tired of life. We're tired of <clears throat> what we think life is. We, and you would be, you would be, wouldn't you? Yeah. And we'd be shattered. And it's the, the main reason for that, according to A Course in Miracles, is guilt. But mm. yet the tiny mad idea of separation. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like you're all on your own, this little island trying to paddle through deep waters and you just keep, you're drowning. But you can't look like you're drowning. No one can know that you're drowning. And that's where the communication needs to come up. And, and for safe, loving, non-judgment of the person that's listening. Or mind journaling, I think, to write things down if you, you know, because not everyone has someone that they have built trust with or have the community. Hopefully yeah. they'll build that community, but you, you never do this alone, you know, like pen and paper, tapping on your iPhone, whatever. Um, just let it out and be your you can be your own guide and teacher as well you don't need a physical presence um, the guidance to, is within you yes yeah yeah and, and that's why I also have a community of writers right which you're a part yes. of as well yes. and, and that's one of the points we've been talking about is the gentle source of writing that's mm. within us mm. You know, yeah, that is, and other things like that. It's really, really powerful that we're talking with each other about these, the background, the the way we we write, where it's coming from, why, mm. and so on. The source, 
mm. the source and in my last a podcast episode which was in german i was speaking with an author and she also we came to the point where she could could actually describe the source where her writing was coming from wow and it was really this stillness and bubbling up of ideas and and how she got there through a through a method a trust technique so my it was yes really amazing to hear you know this writer she's writing fantasy it's full of violence and strong emotions and this and that but the source of it all is a gentle loving kind still and very and always present in the moment bubbling up ideas source mm. oh, i think the best ideas come from that a mind that's still almost uh, empty is the wrong word because it's never empty but it's not empty of what it's not full of thoughts it's full of a sensory it's more clear but it's not empty yeah, what I also liked is she said it, it started by having a question or a thought. So I said, oh, that come, that's mm. like, of course, this little willingness is that question, mm. is that thought. Mm. And then the answer comes from the mm. source. <clears throat> so it's mind watching. Um, yeah. And when we start watching our mind, um, it's, it's quite, I, th I, f I find most things funny. I tend to use my sense of humor, much ado about nothing. You know, I tend to use that. So, um, yeah, I can have, uh, th yeah, thoughts come up and I can watch that thought and decide, eh, and not have much other than that and then something else will come and it's kind of just holding this little it's not even too too long a space it, it it's it, that's the beauty of it because it's such a small hold you don't have that reactionary response which is a layer back it's like peeling the onion and you just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper so you end up hearing your own kind of voice but it's so gentle and it's fun and it's loving and it's all the good stuff mm -hmm. and then that's how you know when it's not that because you're you're practicing that voice now mm -hmm. you you get to a point of drowning out not just drowning out but getting rid of that other voice and so when it does appear, it's a highlight, whereas my mind used to be the other way around. The chaos was what I knew. And these little tiny moments of bright light were something I wouldn't practice. Now it's mm -hmm. the other way around. Yeah, when, when one is leery of that kind and gentle voice, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. And so right that kind of... Actually... Didn't which is really amazing, right? To be afraid of what is actually not judging you. Yeah. Well, because it's a habitual, isn't it? We've walked um, many, 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 many lives um, and time in judgment, either thinking that's what we were supposed to do um, or being judged. And, and it's habitual, it's a habit forming, it really is. And it takes community or or your opportunity to communicate in a, in this way rather than the other way of communication, which is what did you do last week? Oh, I did X, Y, Z, and and the problem from three years ago is, you know, it's, it's that seems to be a lot of the focus, but it's required because we need to hear ourselves. We need to hear ourselves repeat over and over again this addiction to our backstory. Because when you're allowed to keep hearing it, eventually you hear it and you go, wow, 
I'm still saying the same stuff. Yeah. And it's repetitive. It's mm. like it's always again and again the same, mm. same attacks mm. on myself. Mm. And, and then of course if we, on others, but because we are all one. Well, we're we're the when, same when, thing if, to everyone. Well, if 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 we're not in a um, trusting um, relationship at the time of this communication coming up, and someone comes in and corrects, or judges, or tries to um, fix it, then we we've just made it real. We've now just added to that backstory and in a minute i'll read you my backstory so now we're both justified for both feeling depressed whereas if you allow someone to bring up their backstory as many times as they want it doesn't matter how many but you just don't step in there and correct or change it or or judge it but when the moment arises the guidance will come in that moment to deliver something that can be truly helpful mm. but it's not your backstory yeah it's a very very powerful view on it to, to allow people to be right or to allow yourself to be and that's a big that's a thing we're not we've had the habit of not allowing ourselves to be hmm. we so if we can't allow ourselves to be and we're practicing not being then when someone or we're in com on, in communication that's where you'll be coming from and so all we're ever doing is sharing past failures or stories or my my hurts bigger this way and and because of you know the competition the battle the Oh, it's it's exhausting and it's it it's very tired very tiring. Yeah, mm. And so good choices don't then come to to us when we're in that chaos, that mind that's chaotic in thinking only about past and not pr practicing the present moment. Um yeah leads to the the illnesses as well you know it just gets the, more and more tiring you know so we've got to so we get we get used to being in this chaos and so something else has got to come along and make you even more tired and off you go and off until you fall into this deep sleep yeah. uh, when simon passed um evolved um he he was very happy. He wasn't tired physically. He was uh, depleted of all what we have learned we need. Everything, including oxygen, you know, gasping for breath. But his mind was never tired. Never tired. Yeah, that was his mind was as too. perfect. His mind was as perfect as the day I met him. Yeah, he was so, he was so full of of sharing joyful mm. ideas mm. all along. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Even, I mean, he did get caught up once in a while, but he, he really was, his main focus was on the joyful ideas. Yeah, I mean, Simon had an experience of what I call, um, well, the duality, but in um, a, a, a very obvious form, which I don't think we, I've not really experienced, but his duality was, um where he had the ability to be fully in spirit and be this loving self to himself and others he had what the world diagnosed as bipolar disorder so we called it like a duality of the of, of the split mind it was like a perfect example of it um, so at some times of the year, his mind could start working too quickly. And for someone that was so still, that speed didn't need to be much to spin him out. But then it would get faster and faster and faster to the point of psychosis. 
where he would have to go and spend time in a mental hospital for like eight weeks and be heavily um, sedated because there is no other solution the world gives to this. And it's it was traumatic experience to witness and for him, but there were no other answers. Mm. When he would come out the other side of that period, he would be shell-shocked by the response to his mind going fast when he sees when and then obviously he now comes back to this real stillness and he wasn't on any medication he was only ever on medication for the duration of the hospital so when he came back to himself that was a pure version there was no other factors going on that he would discuss the world's answers to the madness was so unfair when he sees most of the world as mad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I th I've, I've come to the conclusion that that when you have you go through some di some difficulties, right, whether it's physical or otherwise, it's always a decision that that brings you back home. Absolutely. It's the choice. It's the choice that was given to us because we are the only, that's the one thing we do have. But it's what do we choose? Between? It's not a judgment if you don't no. choose, choose no. The, the healing thought, right? The healthy thought. No, no, no. And, and it can be, in the, it, uh, of course, it includes all the world solutions, right? Yes. But the, but the, the thought, I think, is the one that actually leads to the change and the rest is, is there to support that yeah i i like the saying um we can't change the world but we can change our mind about the world exactly yeah yes and simon had planned to have another podcast conversation with me about recovery he did. yes and, and we never got to that well, we're kind of having it now because his recovery, I suppose, we could only talk about recovery in terms of mind. Exactly. And that's the only thing he wanted to talk about anyways. And that's, he, he succeeded. Yeah. And so we're actually, you're sharing about how he recovered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, yeah because go, you go. said he, he, he evolved in peace mm. in such a peaceful expression on his mm. face when he evolved mm. right yeah well you know as we've all had got on our faces we've got a few wrinkles a few laughter lines and and the and everything and he was no different um but as the the days part you know that we were getting down to days his face became more and more serene and um, when he actually did pass, um, he has he had a small smile on his face. It was just a, a very restful, loving smile, like like he was home almost. And there wasn't a, there was just not a wrinkle on his face. It was like it had all gone. So all the thought that causes our, our screwed up faces and our, mm. our angst and our furrowed brows all comes from thinking. Well, once there's no thinking going on in the body, it's very relaxed. Mm. So uh, all these wonderful beauty creams out there, I, I, I think that we'd put them out of business if people could just learn how to not think. Mm. Yeah, well, serenity is certainly the most, most you thing. <laughs> yeah. That, that can be, or, yeah. Or feeling that you could have, right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, why not? That we ask for too little. So, yeah, I'm going for serenity now. I'm not going to have yeah. to wait. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. He, he was also very clear about not waiting. Why not mm. now? Why yeah. not now? Why not yeah. choose peace now? Mm. Why not well, choose now is the only... now? 
Yeah, he well, was always very clear about that. And, and yeah, it it's very, hilarious, isn't it? No, and, I'll and wait he would another remind day for you that. again and again, choose it yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and he didn't see himself as sick, which is also very interesting. Yeah, no, he well, his mind wasn't sick, even. I mean, he'd had many years practice with obviously this whole bipolar concept um labeling you know um which we threw that out the window you know we, we, your mind is going fast um you're, you're thinking you know you, this label stuff um but his mind was never sick he knew exactly what was going on throughout all of his experiences um he just knew that one was a physical and then there was him so one of the analogies we used to like is um who is it that is driving the vehicle do you realize the body is a vehicle it's a communication tool but the communication comes from our minds not our physical form and so when you've practiced that and he became with his diagnosis his physical form he separate he could separate easier this is what i was saying at the beginning he found that separation of realizing not separation in the, the belief that we're separated i'm talking about he could see the difference between mind and body so it was mind over body mind first and so he could then accept what was happen happening to his physical form, the chemo, the needles, the operations, the, oh, it, it just never ended. I mean, he had one surgery into his liver without anaesthetic, which was quite amazing, and came home that day um, after, you know, having his um, colostomy to bypass the bowel, um, after he was recovered and home, he was he was out playing tennis. You know, he yeah. he he didn't bow down to the weakness that is the body. He he rose up to the strength of his mind. Yes, and that was always the most important to him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least in every conversation I had, and there's I would like to cite. Dr. Jerry Jampolsky, who says health is peace of mind, because that fits so well to Simon's attitude. Yeah, it really is. Um, it, you know, if you don't take time for your wellness, you'll have to take time for your illness. And wellness is mindfulness, is, is to be truly helpful, to be... And also this thing with being truly helpful, um, it has to be mutually beneficial, knowing what it's supposed to be beneficial to, and that's your peace of mind. So the yes card, you know, no is good too, saying no to things, because maybe you're not spending enough time for your mindfulness over, I don't know, doing a job for someone. What's really what's more important yeah, it's well, asking uh, those internal typical, questions the typical habit of ours is to beat ourselves up if we're not pleasing someone or not pleasing mm. or not doing something that we thought needed to be done mm. and doing something yeah we've else. got so no matter what we're doing we're we're actually in this mode of attacking yeah. ourselves for it which, yeah which i've observed in myself plenty of times yeah we it's well we've been like we've had quite a few years of teaching ourselves that you know it's it it's it's acceptable it's like accepting that we do that first then brings you choice but if we're not accepting it because we're ignoring it we're just carrying on because that's the, what I do. That's what I, how I survive. That's what, and we're so, w what are we frightened of? Like, how can we measure our wellness 
to doing a job for somebody else because we said yes all it requires is honest loving communication again knowing that if you speak not from sacrifice you won't be teaching that so the person that you're letting down won't hear from that version you know there's a way of saying everything we want to say that's our truth without projecting some kind of difficult situation onto the person you are already letting them through what you're saying that you're letting them down we don't want to teach we're letting someone down we want to teach that i'm being responsible for my mindfulness so i need to spend some time on myself i don't think if anyone said that to me i would be no i'm cross at you doing that i'd be wow that's amazing i should do that mm. yeah they would be yeah. reminders yeah the thing is the fear is there that you will that you will come out of it with without the person being in your life anymore we, because of the the special relationship type of thinking yeah uh, the cause of many issues is the special relationship special uh, love isn't special and when we're loving ourselves and we're coming from this loving responsibility th th there's this responsibility for maintaining that this and how do you maintain this love for yourself if you're not giving yourself opportunity to be still to see where you are because that's what this is all about we're supposed to be using our life to come back to this serenity to this graceful state to this loving space where all good choices can come from so when you are in that joy and in that happiness and slow enough to consider the question or the ask to begin with and only make a decision or a choice when it feels right rather than a reactionary one yes i'll do that for you yes i'll do that for you you're not or we're not no, giving us do it yeah or no i won't do it, it equally just as because no's are as too many no's too many yeses it doesn't really matter what matters is realizing that you need to just take a little bit more breathing space to consider an idea brought to you and take it inward inward inquiry and ask is it truly helpful to you and to them to say yes or no and sometimes we don't know and don't know is okay to say is in answer to a question until you do yeah I would, i'd like to discuss trust with you Mm -hmm. yes, that's that's one of the main the actually the characteristic on what which all teachers of God are founded. And yes. it's, a, it's a topic. Why is trust so beneficial? Because you know, sometimes you think when someone is trusting themselves, that that means they will ignore everyone else's needs or trusting what's in them. And I would like to discuss that because I think that trust is is and the way it's described in the Course in Miracles actually can only lead to being beneficial to everyone. Yeah, I suppose we would have to go through learning trust to learn what trust is. So therefore, in the practice itself, we will experience things where we thought trust was like that. And it's like the love card, like the love word. Loved is love is again used externally, like something you can get, something you seem to give away, and someone can take it from you. Trust, I think, is exactly the same, along with honesty and all the other traits of a teacher. Um, trust is trusting that you're being truly helpful, that this trust that I have from this 
would we be talking about a person trust or the trust of the voice within our minds yeah trust for me is the thing is the way i've been taught to see trust was was more like people being obnoxious and doing whatever they feel right and of course yeah. the miracles is describing something completely different yeah the opposite of that and that's that's the conundrum i would like to well i suppose tr a little um, bit it's, it's tr i think trust is see love is but trust has to be seemingly built and i think through communication so the flow so when someone is talking we allow them to talk we don't interject we don't correct or steer we, we just allow the flow that's trust to me mm -hmm. holding a space where that person can trust to be open well i remember place... also in the description of trust um says those who know the outcome is certain can easily trust mm. and, and have patience right as well yeah pat well, patience. Let's see, all, i think all the attributes of 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 a teacher of a course you can't have one without the other ultimately they are all kind of the same yeah yeah it, all, it also always says that we are love and yes. so it's, it's just the it's a misinterpretation if we can't see it at this moment mm. yes yeah and we have a teacher yeah. within us who can give us the correct interpretation that corrects the whole thing yes it, 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 only found when we're quiet in mind mm. yeah in the now mm. so that's the question of when we have the habit of not being quiet, which is the mm. usual habit, mm. um, how do we change that habit, right? Because it's a habit and it's really, really, really persistent. Uh, if, but mind watching, actively watching your mind. Yeah. I think that's how we learn about the quieter voice within our minds that's how we see it oh there's something different there you know that made me feel oh what's that and then this next distraction you know the narrated stories the oh the worries about the future based and we're, you're off however we trigger ourselves into the crazy chaotic mind of distraction and future thinking based on past is life our, our lives and so within that is the opportunity to undo so our life doesn't really you know us, from my experience not much changes in terms of location or circumstances but what does change, like I said, we, we, we can't change the world, but we can change our mind about the world. So my world hasn't really changed, but my mind about it keeps evolving deeper and deeper and further away from the chaotic. And I'm going to keep going because I'm not settling. <laughs> yeah, you're not settling for less than the total yes. um, of love. Yes. Totally yeah. Love. yeah yeah i think yeah. one of the aspects of getting there in my experience is that you actually ask for help within mm. because mm. getting still may not be something i'm capable of at that moment or not willing to be mm. automatically but i may be willing to say help me please mm. help mm. and then the anti the answer can come it's like the the author who said oh she had an idea she had a question what would this be like or that or that right and then mm. the answer would come and there would be images coming in or whatever mm. else right mm. Mm. and i think that's that's one of the ways we we tend to connect with this voice 
the mm. otherwise is suppressed or hidden from us. Yeah, inner inquiry. Yeah. Mm. So if you're inquiring rather than questioning. <clears throat> because sometimes just inquiry. watching the thoughts is not, not so easy when you're in the midst of the action. But the, 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 the asking for help or this, I need help, I don't know any further. I don't know what to do next. I have no idea, right? Mm. I feel like every idea that I've been getting so far has not been helpful. <laughs> but nothing, help, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whatever works. Uh, we've all got, as I said, the tool bag. And I think that at some point, somewhere there, yeah, I did a lot of a lot of journaling. I filled about five books of journaling, um, uh, doing that very thing. But I wrote it down. Yeah. Um, I because I've been able to practice this sort of vacant head. I don't. It's not vacant, but it's clear for many many years. Um, I got m more uh, anxious with the clutter. That's what sort of took me down the rabbit hole was the cluttering but I never let go of that ability to have this empty head like daydreamer yeah yeah like a daydreamy head and so that daydreamy head can allow me to then inner inquiry because I still talk to myself in that state it's love and I, it's really nice um when I've been in heightened situations, um, so I've been, uh, I've had to rep represent myself in a court case. Um, it's to do with the earthquakes. And I was defending myself because of affordability around lawyers. And I remember walking into the courtroom and it was high court. So I had to, um, you know, go down where all the other lawyers were and, and be present in this world that was like so, so out of my zone. Um, but I had to be present in it. So I had to learn on my feet. And but to do that was to watch it from a sort of a third eye. I can't explain it any more than that, but it was literally that, not a personality self, not not the anxious Rachel that could step in there or, you know, someone that was trying to make out they knew what they were doing, doing. I had to just remember the truth and observe. Yeah. And it worked. And it, it, it really worked. Um, it worked in the most amazing way. And, um, yeah, I didn't really say too much either that day. Yeah, I think that's a, one of the aspects of how to how to live a voice is focused. Yes, because you were very focused on what very. on what was essential and what was not right, and the essential yes. was what you were focused on. Yes, and I think that's one of the aspects of that the voice that we're speaking of is that it is very focused, and that's yes. why, of course, the miracles says it requires mind training and i think mm. in those moments you actually are applying this capability that is built within us mm. to focus yes which yeah. we often forget to use we actually oh, we... use it in the other way around right we yeah. focus on what we what is harmful to us and everyone because it kind of has an ability well I think we've taught, we have had taught ourselves that that made us feel alive. Some kind of emotion, the, the chaos, the stress. Oh, I feel alive. You know, I'm busy. Um, you, you know, it's good to be busy all the time. It's good to be doing all the time. It makes me feel alive. Mm -hmm. But wow, it burns out very quickly. Yeah, I think that's fascinating when it comes to writing as well. How many writing courses or people are teaching to put suspense and drama into your books? Mm. And and how the when you would suggest 
the opposite, which would be it be a gentle walk in spring, like it's described in A Course in Miracles, right? Mm. Um, that is a new concept to many people, but that would be the type of book that would be most beneficial or is most beneficial. Well, us. yeah, but then then I would say that the, the purpose of some of this life stuff is to lift up the unconscious guilt. And we do that through seeming adversities. So if you're watching a movie or playing a song or reading a book and it has you have a reaction to it it's because we're believing in the concepts that we've been taught to believe are real so the horror the scary the the fear death you know this so that when you're reading these books or you're watching this film it's another opportunity to watch your mind and watch what it is you believe. And we don't mm. often get those things happen in everyday life, but you can go to fantasy, you can go to music, films, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and in that environment, you, you can be on your own speed to watch your reactions, mm. your yes. thoughts around these things. So it's kind of like the teaching required to apply the course. Yeah, I like that because that's what I was sharing with the, the author in the other conversation. Right? Hmm. How, we use everything, since right? It, since the, um, the source of her writing is this calm, peaceful, bubbling source, hmm. right? Then hmm. the writing no matter how dramatic it gets is nonetheless conveying the message of peace mm. joy and happiness yeah and so so even then it's conveying that message even mm. though the book is so dramatic so full of violence and violent yeah. thoughts and so on mm. and it also has peaceful thoughts in it of course right yeah but it's but it's it's really in total it's conveying that one message and that is like you said fantasy science fiction all these various ways can actually be the perfect place to to mm. to see see with spirit what is going on right yes and to allow healing to take place um but yes, I was saying how this gentle walk in spring is such a perfect image of what it what this voice is conveying and how life can be, right? Mm. And how we have this resistance to that, saying that we need drama, we need this. Mm. Of course, we get it, of course, right? When mm. we want it. Mm -hmm. We get what we when want. When we've asked for it. Yeah. yeah. We get what yeah. we want, what we ask yes, for. Yes, exactly. Right? And so so asking for this gentle walk in spring is such a, a different ask than what we've mm. been um, hab habitually asking for. Yeah, I think um, some would say that sounds really boring or that sounds really, you know, or dull. Exactly. Or, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's the type of feedback I'd get if I wrote something that was like a gentle <laughs> walk in spring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from some people that's right yeah yeah so yeah yes. but yeah. that uh that actually that can be so so um healthy this gentle walk in spring and actually it keeps you reading mm. right yeah and, why does it keep you reading if if everyone so many people are saying no drama is the only thing that keeps you reading but this gentle walk in spring keeps you reading as well why of course yeah so then it's the choice isn't it it's like do i want to awaken the gentleness in me or do i feel like reading some fantasy science fiction where i can be well let's see where am i you know do i am i in this mind I like testing myself. I do like that. Um, uh, but I won't test, I won't have to, watch, like, I'll put a, a movie on and I might decide to go for a scary one just to see 
my reactionary responses and they're often very funny you know like the the filmmaker did a good job you know like it, you got me to jump um but it doesn't happen that often and so i i used to go and find like the scary scary ones and to the point where i was laughing at them because of the ridiculousness of knowing that this film was made you know however many years ago the actors aren't even you know doing this job now they're doing something else it's not even real and yet i can have these responses to it the imagination based on past or imaginary thoughts and then you can turn the film off and have creep out moments for a couple of hours afterwards thinking that there's someone in the garden you know that it's just crazy that doesn't happen to me anymore um, and i don't go chasing that um that roller coaster um i like to steer towards more fun films or deep messages of love um but not the romantic version i you i can use those films but i'm not looking at love in that way um and but music seems to be the one that really has grabbed me most of my life and very much since simon's passing um i play a lot more music we always have music but i play a lot more of it and the lyrics and everything that i'm drawn to and sometimes i read them and yeah it just makes me smile they're all reflective of the spring walk that you talk about beautiful yeah mm. i'm still attracted to to very dramatic things so I see that it's it's still a topic for me to. Oh, I have my to, to I have, move no, on I to have move on to the gentle walk of spring that I that I I, I still tend to go to the more mm. dramatic. But yeah, you know, dramatic's good every now and then. I think it's good just to see, yeah, just to check check in where you are. It's just mm. a fun exercise. So it's it's part of the journey of healing can be mm. drama, can mm. be suspense, can be horror, whatever mm. it is, right? For mm. any one of us. Mm. We and, and I need to learn to to allow that to be part of we need to learn to allow that to be part of the journey as well. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I could be beating myself up because of this choice all the time, right? Or there's people yeah. who would say, watching a film, that's not productive. What are you doing there, right? Mm. You're watching this or that. And, mm. and you think that, you may be thinking that as well, right? And so it's, mm. it's, it's, it's like a like another attack happening. Yeah, yeah. Believing in attack. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a whole other subject. <laughs> yeah, and so what I what was remarkable is is you know with Simon who who was going through this what most people would describe as the most excruciating drama, right? Yeah, and, and he was speaking of peace, of love, of of communication, of mm -hmm. the the real world, and then what comes after that, mm -hmm. right? Heaven, and so he was speaking of all these things. And and his emphasis was certainly not on the drama, no, no. not at all. And no. so that that that's so so remarkable, right? How the mind mm. can actually choose peace, mm. and so that also fits to watching these dramatic movies or reading these dramatic things. Is that in the midst of that, you can actually be thinking peaceful things. Yeah, and for me, who's you know still here in this in this physical form, um, none of that went unnoticed at all. In, in fact, we talked about it a lot. Um, that when he has now evolved, that why would I then, after such a huge teaching, choose to see the drama when? at the end of this journey they he, he didn't need to see drama he didn't he didn't see it he didn't walk it he didn't talk it that why would i then do it when i'm not in a physical state if you like for a better word you know like it teaches 
me that my choices can either come now or I can wait until that kind of scenario. His gift to me was to teach me not to fear illness, not to fear death, um, to not even think about it. Yeah. Don't make it a concept. Yeah. So by being mindful and uh, mind watching to know what I am choosing my perception on based on my thoughts, emotions and beliefs, which obviously come from a desire, um, to, to walk a walk aligned with a desire to be happy, truly helpful, loving myself, and not to try and change the world, but to see it differently. And that's my world first. And then from that, um, all my relationships are kind of healed anyway, because what could go wrong if I'm being mindful for being responsible for my peace. I can't yeah. see much going wrong. Accepting the atonement for yourself. Mm. As of course the miracle says. Yeah. yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. It's beautiful. I think, think one of another of his messages, even if I don't know if he always used those words, but it is that we're all we all are holy. And this holiness was what he was focusing on. And yeah, he, else. yeah, this whole and holiness came in um, sort of the last year. I mean, he, he did use that word, um, but it seemed to have a different meaning, um, a lot more belief behind it. Like when you know someone as well as I knew him and as he did me, the man face watching you know watching how what someone's really saying he he really believed it there was no doubt there at all yeah and yeah he he felt he he was whole and and that was despite what you were observing how his body mm. was going Mm, oh, absolutely. And that's what made made it also more um, accepting for me because he was not, I mean, I won't say that he wasn't in physical distress, but he wasn't in mental stress. Right. And, sort of, and, and you got to be able to have that trust between the trust that we had in our communication of where we were coming from didn't open that up to interpretation. So uh, he didn't have to convince me his mind was okay. Mm -hmm. Even though I would see him in unbearable physical pain, right. his voice and his words were not. Yeah, that's a very beautiful message. I think that's a good place to stop. Yeah, thank um, you. That was that was really lovely, Monica. So I'd like to thank you for showing up and for doing this mm -hmm. and honoring Simon in such a beautiful way. And I would like to ask you, is there any way people can get in touch with you that you would like to highlight if they want to? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm obviously with the Telegraph um, app, but because I'm quite new to it, I haven't got my um, name up there. But, uh, you know, Facebook, Messenger, um, please just, um, it's it's uh, Rachel Beaton. Um, so you can friend request me on there and I will accept your friend friendship and we can talk whenever you like. Yeah, and like you said, you're also on Telegram, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Then I thank you once again for having this conversation and sharing so many deep insights that you've gained through this 
connection to this oneness and this thank you, companionship Anthony. with Simon as well. And thank you for joining with me in such a trusting environment. It was lovely. Yeah, I'm also very, very thankful that you're speaking with community and sharing with so many people. So I believe that's very, very important. So thank you for that as well, in the name of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bless if you. I may, um, yeah. Yeah, Bless and I'm sure soon. we'll speak again soon. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who will listen and is listening. And yes, same. Thank you. Until next time. Until next time. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.